Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to today's episode of The Seller TV. So as you can see, today we're having a little bit of a tasting video. And so we're actually tasting four of the new Beaujolais Cru wines, which we've recently just got up online. So from the left, as you can see, we've got a Brewery. This is from Chateau de Grand Prix. This is going for $45 a bottle. We then have a very exciting and very, very special bottle of Moulin au Vent. And this is from Johan Lardy or Domain Johan Lardy. And this is using vines that were planted in 1903. So that means the vines here, and of course, older vines means more concentrated wines. And so as you can expect, something that is over 100 years old, or well, the vines are at least, this is from the 2015 vintage, <clears throat> then this is going to be one hell of a concentrated wine. And I can attest to that. We next have a Chirouble, uh, or a Chirouble, uh, uh, which is an, again one of the other crews, and this is from Domaine Coquelet, uh, or Damien Coquelet as well and then this finally we've got a very cool label very very new way producer again from chateau de grand prix so same producer as this and this is from their fleury and as you can see this is called instead of it's a play on words instead of being a cuvee special or you know special cuvee uh, this is their cuvee a cuvee spatial, as you can see from the little astronaut on the front, which is very cool. I like those little nifty sort of things. <clears throat> anyway, so these are four of the ten, uh, not Grand Cru's, but Cru's of Beaujolais. We, uh, and they're all brand new to us, which is very, very exciting, and they're all up online, as I said. So going from left to right, this is $45 a bottle, $60 a bottle, $50 and $50. Uh, dollars a bottle. So very, very cool, very exciting. And for all of August, we're having 10% off all of the new Beaujolais that we've got in. We've got a few other Beaujolais, uh, sort of Beaujolais AC wines, a few Beaujolais uh, Village wines, and a few other sort of um, crew Beaujolais as well. But these ones, we wanted to just show off some of our, uh, four of our favourite uh, of the crew Beaujolais, which are recent to us which is exciting so let's get tasting it um <clears throat> so basically the idea of today is to showcase to you uh basically the differences that all these different crews can have uh just giving them a little swirl around let them all uh, open up a little bit and so some of you may have seen uh, a video that we posted a couple of days ago i think uh which was all about beaujolais wines it sort of talked about the different um, production processes there the different crews how all each and every single one of them differed uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well it's about just a 20 minute video i think um but lots and lots of information goes into that i went into that and from there basically we wanted to show you now in this video a tasting uh, of a few of the different crews just to show you just how different they really can be. So let's get tasting shall we? First off I'm just gonna sort of smell through all of them and then we'll taste uh, each and every single one of them <clears throat> so you can sort of get an idea. So this is the brewery. Mm. Absolutely lovely on the nose. I have to say this one straight away is very very concentrated. Lots and lots of beautiful sort of raspberry liqueur flavors sort of yeah raspberry liqueur lots of sort of fresh raspberries juicy that really really lovely sort of wild raspberry thing a bit of red cherry comes in here but i have to say actually this is much more on the berry front of things this is sort of red cherries where red raspberries strawberries mm. a touch of sort of red currant comes through and then that really, really sort of ripe black plum character really starts to come through as well on the nose. So that, for me, basically brewy, that is raspberry, that's a little bit of floral aspect coming in there, but very much that sort of raspberry, those red berry sort of fruit flavors. So this is the Moulin au Vent. Now, this is not your everyday Moulin au Vent, as I said before. Uh, it's from vines that were planted in 1903, so I'm expecting something very, very concentrated here. So let's give it a sniff. Mm. And it does not disappoint. <laughs> it really doesn't. My God, you could get lost in this. Oh, this is delicious. So layers of flavour already, and it's only been open for about half an hour. So it's really still just starting to really open up and showcase what it's uh, what it's all about. But straight away, you're getting a whole bunch of these sort of black plums, these beautiful floral characteristics. 
sort of these black florals, so we're thinking sort of dried uh, violets, a little bit of uh, lavenders coming through here as well. Mm, mm. And then there's this lovely spiciness which is sort of coming through, the baking spices, a little bit of black pepper, maybe some uh, white pepper perhaps. But definitely a lot of clove, there's definitely this sort of allspice characteristic. This, this spoke, uh, smoky, this sort of oaky uh, aspect as well is coming through in this. Very, very interesting, very, very concentrated. So for me, differences between this one and that one is that was much more sort of raspberry, sort of those red berry sort of fruit flavors. This is a little bit more sort of purple, black fruit flavors. Uh, and again, a little bit more smoky, a little bit more complex. So this is the Chirouble. Uh, well, I always say Le, but I think it's actually, someone was saying to me, it's a sheer Bull. I don't know, it sounds a little bit too much like Chernobyl for me, so I'm going to stick to having the little accent on the E. Anyway, so this is the Chirouble. So this is lovely floral, where a lot of the, well, these two anyway, when you first pick them up and give them a smell, they're very much all about their sort of raspberry or those juicy, fruity aspects. This one, for me, straight away, is... This is floral. This has got a lot of sort of red rose characteristics sort of dried lavender characteristics coming through and then that sort of beautiful lovely uh, little bit of red cherry comes through some red plum sort of freshly pressed red plum juice mm. absolutely lovely so that again that one's a little bit more sort of refined i suppose and, and much more floral uh, aspect here so this is the fleury again with a very very cool label really have to look at it. I mean, I love that label. That, uh, that's absolutely beautiful. All right, so this is the Fleury. Mmm. So for me, this is all about sort of these cherry flavors. Cherry, cherry, cherry. Sort of that sour red cherry, but then also that sort of macerated black cherry. Mmm, lots of concentration here. Lots of concentration here. And then that sort of cooked strawberry characteristic comes through, not sort of candied strawberry, nothing like that, but very much that sort of concentrated, you know? Strawberry puree almost, you know, strawberry jam, I guess. And then sort of touches of sort of blueberry and a little bit of um, <clears throat> a sort of black plum pie. But again, I mean, each time I'm, I'm sniffing it, I'm always inhaling a little bit of that sort of beautiful cherry flavor. Again, it's sort of, it's neither red cherry nor black cherry. It's, it's sort of both, which is exciting. So there you go. That's a <clears throat> first little taster of these uh, different uh, Beaujolais Cru wines. We, so just to recap for you there, we had the Brewy, which is a little bit more raspberry, uh, a little bit mo much more of those sort of red berry fruit flavors. We then had the Moulin Avant, which was a little bit more complex, a little bit more spicy, a little bit more sort of purple black fruit flavors. And then we've got the uh, Chirouble, or the Chirouble. Um, <clears throat> And this one's a little bit more refined, a little bit more spicy, uh, with some a little bit of plummy and cherry fruit flavors. And then the Fleury on the end here, this is all about that cherry. Yeah, all about that cherry, which is just gorgeous. <coughs> right, so let's give them a little bit of a taste, shall we? This has got lots of acidity here, which is which is nice. It's exactly sort of what you want. Because remember, first and foremost, Beaujolais is, whether it's a Beaujolais or Beaujolais village or a Beaujolais or crew, like one of these wines here, they are, generally speaking, a nice, light, refreshing uh, sort of style of wine. These ones, of course, are a lot more complex. So sort of we're thinking akin here to sort of, uh, well, at least a village, but definitely sort of a premier crew sort of style. Um, or sort of quality level as far as Burgundy is concerned, if we're going to compare the two, uh, compare the two regions here. And so these ones definitely are a little bit more complex. These as well, I'd like to point out every single one of these wines here, and all of the Beaujolais, funny enough, uh, that we've got up online, they're all 100% organic, uh, most of them are biodynamic, and they're all 100% natural as well. 
Most of them have got quite low sulfur levels as well, which is quite exciting, which means that every single one of these really are very, very tewar based uh, and all about making sure that we are tasting the differences between those different crews, which is quite exciting. Anyway, back to the brewery. So the brewery, lots of acidity here. A nice tannic structure, nice and light though, nothing too tannic or anything else like this. Nice low tannins. It's still quite a medium bodied, it's definitely quite fleshy, quite fruity again still. So those same sort of flavours that we were getting on the nose, there's beautiful raspberry flavours. That's sort of black raspberry flavour actually, which is really sort of tingling right along my palate at the moment. And then quite a bit of black plums. There's again that sort of raspberry liqueur, that sort of really intense, juicy, rich uh, raspberry flavour. So that's absolutely gorgeous. So let's taste the Moulin Avant. Mm. Mm. Don't really want to spit that out. That's gorgeous. Mm. Mm. So that's juicy, that's rich, that's got so much concentration here and fruit concentration on the palate here. Mm. So we're getting these really big, boisterous, plummy fruit flavors, especially on the beginning. I'm getting those beautiful black plums, they're sort of black uh, black Doris plums, if you know the ones that I'm talking about. Sort of fresh plum. Mm. And then it sort of mellows out a little bit. And then those floral aspects come through, a little bit of that crushed violet, or that sort of dried out violet, dried out lavender uh, sort of characteristic is coming through. And then this lovely sort of wave of sort of black cherry uh, opens up, and then these beautiful sort of, mm, that plummy flavor is, comes back a little bit especially on the pellet here, out on the finish here, I should say. Mm, and then that lovely sort of whisper of, uh, of oak and smokiness, that sort of peppery, the spicy notes, again, those sort of clove and mixed spice uh, sort of aspects coming through. Mm. Mm, it's a really, really long finish here. And as I said before, this is using uh, vines that were planted in 1903. Uh, exclusively, uh, which means that this is very, very concentrated. And as I can, <laughs> I can absolutely attest to that now. Uh, now that I've tried it, it is juicy, it is rich, and it's concentrated. There is lots and lots going on here. And as I said, the finish is still, still sort of lingering on. Actually, there's beautiful sort of smoky aspects of really melding in so perfectly uh, with those beautiful sort of cherry fruits and those plummy, the beautiful, beautiful plummy fruit flavors. So that's lovely, <laughs> absolutely lovely. And for only $60 a bottle, again, as I'm saying, I mean, if you're wanting to find that sort of quality uh, out of Burgundy, then you'll be paying closer to 100, if not over. So anyway, let's try this one. This is the Chiroublé from Domaine Coquelet. Uh, So again, the beginning, all of these ones, well, these two anyway, they were much more sort of fruit fo focused. This one for me, on the nose and the palate now, it really is a little bit more sort of spicy, a little bit more sort of on those beautiful little undertones are really, really coming through. There's sort of floral undertones, those violets, those lavender are definitely coming through, singing, um, sort of cherry blossom as well comes through and then that beautiful sort of refined spiciness a little bit of white pepper but then a little, quite a bit of a sort of cinnamon actually it's just sort of tingles right down my palate there which is just lovely i mean it does definitely have that sort of base of uh, those beautiful sort of cherry fruit flavors and those beautiful plummy and a little bit of raspberry fruit fruit flavors but for me this one let's just go back on the nose it is, it really is. It's it's all about that beautiful sort of spiciness and that sort of the spiciness and the f floralness and then, then the fruit comes in, you know, whereas these ones are much more sort of fruit focused. This, this one is just, it's beautiful, lovely. It's a nice point of difference as well. And so this is the Fleury. Uh, these guys actually produce a couple of different Fleury's and we do have them all online. Uh, but this is, as I say, this is the Cuvée Spatial. And I, re I, I just can't get over how, uh, how fantastic that label is. I, I love it. So let's give it a try. Mm. 
Mm. And like I said before, on the nose, same as on the pellet. There's beautiful cherry fruit flavors, raspberries, black cherries, and then that real red cherry, that sort of macerated red cherry, with that sort of slightly sour red cherry as well. That sort of same sort of red cherry flavor that you get in really, really ripe Pinot Noir, or sort of Sangiovese, that sort of spicy red uh, cherry aspect, which is lovely. Again, a nice point of difference, whereas these ones are all sort of beautiful forest fruit flavors. This one's a little bit more floral. This one's just that sort of zingy, that juicy, uh, fantastically, slightly tangy um, red cherry flavor, which is just lovely. On the palate, there, there is a little bit of oak uh, influence here. But I have to say, it is still largely those cherry fruit flavors, and then actually a little bit of, a little bit of sort of blueberry, uh, sort of that blueberry tart, blueberry pie sort of aspect comes through. Mm. And just sort of again a touch of strawberry, a touch of that, but that those beautiful those sort of cherry fruit flavors of black and red uh, cherry fruit flavors are really zinging right down the whole entire palette. The finish as well, it's nice and long, it's beautiful, it's silky again. Each and every single one of these wines, they're silky, they're elegant, they're absolutely fantastic. So this has been the four of our new uh, Beaujolais imports, which are very, very exciting to us. Uh, and so please do check it out. We do have some fantastic producers up there. The three of them, of course, uh, that we've got here, we've got Domaine uh, Coquelet, we've got uh, Johan Lardy, uh, and then we've got Chateau de Grand Prix, which is oh, these two as well. So these are just four of our favorite crew wines, which we've got up. I think we've got about 10 different crews up there. Well, not necessarily every single uh, Beaujolais crew, because there are 10 of them, of course. Uh, we do have a couple of Fleuries, for instance, and then a couple of Moulin Avants. Um, and <clears throat> absolutely fantastic. So I hope you've enjoyed our little tasting video, uh, g tasting through the different Beaujolais crews. We love them and we hope you love them too. All the information is below if you are wanting to sort of check them out or buy a bottle or two of these wines yourself. They are absolutely fantastic and I highly recommend you doing them so. Um, to save you asking later in the, on in the comments, all of these wines, I have to say, they do have very, very good uh, sort of tannic structure and also that acidity structure. So for ageability, then I'd say that these guys would probably do, especially this one, and and this one actually <clears throat> these ones got a little bit more tannin than those two uh, and so i'd say that they're going to age very very well for at least another sort of five to well five to eight years i'd say but of course beaujolais being beaujolais the beauty of it is is that it is sort of a little bit more upfront a little bit more fruit forward uh, and that they are making for drinking in the first sort of few years of its lifetime but it will be interesting to see exactly where these two well all of them actually are in a few years time. I've already got a few bottles for my cellar. What about you?